Mr. Speaker. In closing, uh, I want to mention how I came to, to really uh, be converted to the cause of right to try. I served in the Arizona State Legislature with Laura Kanaparik, who was also serving in the legislature when I first met her. But by 2014, she was no longer serving in the state legislature. She was an advocate. That year, Laura was in the fight of her life against ovarian cancer, and her mission was to see right to try legislation passed into law. In the end, her efforts for this cause succeeded beyond everyone's wildest expectations when 80 percent of the electorate in Arizona voted to uh, enact right to try. But unfortunately, Laura is not with us because she lost her brave battle with cancer last year. The year yes, last year. But her legacy as a tireless patient advocate lives on. I'll continue to carry on the fight, not just for Laura Kanaparik, but for all those patients across this country who are battling against the odds every day. And I'm joined by those who are here tonight, those who have co-sponsored this bill, and many others, many other advocacy groups, such as Goldwater Institute in Arizona, who continues to fight for this. I fight for Bertrand Might. Bertrand is a very special little boy. He was the first person ever to be diagnosed with a rare fatal genetic disorder called NGLY1 that has left this seven-year-old paralyzed. Because the disease was only identified by scientists in 2012, and only a few people worldwide have been diagnosed with it, there is no cure and no treatment available. Because the disorder is so rare, a drug may never be developed to treat it. But scientists have found that Bertrand responds to certain investigational therapies. So Bertrand's family will have to rely on trying those new investigational medications as long as they have access to them. That's why we need this right to try legislation. I fight for Jordan McLean, seven-year-old Jordan, says he wants to grow up to be a five so he can save lives. He has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which could leave him paralyzed within five years and shortens his life expectancy to only 20 years. There's a drug now being used in clinical trials that is helping young children like Jordan, but it could take another seven years for that drug to be available on the market. His parents cannot afford to wait for the FDA to give that drug its final approval. He could be in a wheelchair by then. And this investigational drug could add years to Jordan's life, which would give him the chance to save others. We've already heard when Representative Fitzpatrick discussed Matt Bellina and his needs and his advocacy. And we fight for him. And we fight for Michaela Knapp. At 24, Michaela was diagnosed with a deadly form of kidney cancer that had already, already migrated into her bones before she even knew she was sick. She went through every known treatment in a matter of months and nothing worked. Her high school sweetheart, Keith, heard about a drug under development that was successfully treating people with this same cancer. But Michaela was not allowed to enroll in the clinical trial. Michaela and Keith launched a social media campaign to try to get access to the drug, but it wasn't enough. The FDA didn't help. Michaela died on April 24th, 2014. Five months later, on September 4th, the FDA gave final approval to the drug that might have saved her. I fight for Diego Morris. When he was 10 years old, Diego woke up with a sore leg. His mom thought it was just another sports injury, but the pain didn't go away. They knew something was wrong, but they never expected osteosarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer. After exhausting all treatments available, Diego's doctor recommended he try mifermatide, which wasn't available in the United States, but was being safely used and had been given the Prix Gallien Award, the gold medal for pharmaceutical research and development in England. The Morris, fam the Morris family wasted no time and made the move abroad to try to save Diego's life. The treatments worked. Now Diego is back home in Phoenix and back to playing his favorite sports. We fight unitedly for the countless other patients who deserve a right to try. We must act without further delay. Again, I thank those who've, who've been here to testify tonight. And uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my